Hello and welcome back. Um, today we're going to be talking about system software, application software, and the system unit. So let's jump into it. So first up, we're going to be talking about system software. And this is actually is what allows the software to work with the computer. Uh, without this, we, computers would be pretty much useless. So we need the system software to be able to work and communicate with the computer hardware. And as well, part of the system resources helps to manage the different resources that the computer has. And you will learn about these resources throughout the, um, this course as well. And the system software, it's actually a collection of different programs that are used. And the most important one to start with is actually your operating system. This is the main part of the system software. And as well, you have different utilities that are able to be used to help configure maintain and even run your, um, your computer. And finally, another very important part is your device drivers. Your device drivers allow the hardware to communicate with your operating system. So all of these together, these three items actually make up your system software. And so let's start looking at different types of operating systems. We're all pretty much familiar with Microsoft Windows. This is a very popular one. Um, you know, it's probably the most popular out on it in use today, especially within corporations and businesses. Next is Apple OS X. And Apple OS X is actually taking, um, you know, it's getting very popular. You're seeing a lot more people walking around, especially since the release of the iPhone and iPad. And then finally, another one that we're probably not as familiar with is actually Linux. And Linux is actually a free open source operating system. So you can actually go and download this and use it for free which is actually very beneficial if you think about it because Windows and, you know, it costs you a pretty penny to purchase. And well, as, you know, Apple does give away their operating systems for free now, but the price of buying an Apple laptop or an Apple desktop computer is quite expensive. So, you know, you can get regular hardware and run Linux, which is a free operating system. And as well, your operating system does provide different functions for you. And these functions vary from as I mentioned, allocating resources to the user interface, which, you know, we have many different types of user interfaces. If you look at the, you know, from Windows to OS X, the user interface does vary greatly. And finally, it allows us to be able to run different applications that we install, such as your web browser. And next, you know, we're going to move into talking about different utilities that the um, operating system and your system software uses to make it easier to use. So let's start looking at the different utilities that we have, which are a part of your system software. So as I mentioned, utilities. Um, these do help perform tasks to manage your resources. And as I said, we will look at these resources later on. The resources can vary from um, your system memory to your hard drive to even your CPU. These can all be managed by um, you know, the utilities and your operating system. So and examples as well that we have um, are your antivirus program, which you should be running, you know, to help protect your system from viruses. You also have disk utilities and display and video utilities to help, you know, performance and actually get, you know, your display configured as you wish. And next we have device drivers. And device drivers are extremely important because it allows the hardware to be used by the operating system. Without device drivers, that new graphics card that you installed would not be able to be used. Um, the operating system wouldn't know about it. You wouldn't be able to get all the features that you wish to have with it. So device drivers are extremely important. And always make sure you know to update your device drivers, to look for new ones, and make sure you install proper device drivers that are you know released by the vendor of your hardware. It's extremely important. They update it, so you know, make sure you're updating them as well. So we've talked a lot about system software. Um, so now let's start looking at different app forms of application software. So let's jump into it. So what the application software actually does is it actually provides a way of communicating with the operating system. So when you launch your web browser, it's actually going to communicate with your operating system to be able to perform the functions that it needs. And you know, application software, this is what we, and we as the, you know, as the end user that's using the software use. 
And these are all your different programs from your web browsers to an email client to, you know, listening to music. You know, these are all forms of application software that we can use. Um, and we do have three main types as well um, of application software. We have our general purpose, we have our specialized, and we have our mobile apps. So these are, you know, three types of application software that we can actually use and get accustomed to um, with using. And we will look at these in depth as well. So you will learn about, you know, what makes up a mobile app, what is um, a specialized program, and you know, our general purpose. So we will look at these. So we've been looking at applications and system software. So, and we've also mentioned hardware. So now let's look at the different types of hardware that we can use and purchase. So to start with, we will um, look at the types of computers that are available. And these are what we will purchase. Um, not all of them we will purchase, but they're in use. So the first one is actually a supercomputer. And this is a very specialized um, type of computer where it has a high density of CPUs. By high density, I mean there's a lot of different CPUs to do a lot of number crunching and data crunching. Because of all the CPUs, it provides us with this fast processing power that we're able to use and conduct experiments and um, data analyzing, such as for earthquakes and predicting hurricanes. So, you know, supercomputers have great uses because, you know, analyzing earthquakes and hurricanes it can help save lives in the future as well. Another type of hardware that we can look at is the um, mainframe computers. These are still in use, um, probably not as much anymore today, I would say, but we do still have use of these um, by the government and corporate companies. Um, and basically what they're used for is a lot of bulk data processing and financial transactions. So, you know, they are still in use, but not as much anymore. They are becoming less popular, but they are still used, so they're good to know about. And next, we actually can look at um, mid-range computers. And so what are mid-range computers? Well, these are kind of like servers. These are what we can use um, to connect and pull data off of, such as like a website. A website's hosted on a server. So these are your mid-range computers, have a little more faster processing speed, uh, but are less expensive than a um, supercomputer. But, you know, they're still pretty fast and they, they do still cost a good chunk of money as well. Next, we have personal computers. And personal computers are what we use. This is what, you know, you see in the classrooms. This is what you're using. This is, you know, what everyone is most accustomed to being um, to use and carrying around with them. So what types of personal computers do we have? Well, we have several different types, and the first one is actually a desktop. This is what we're most familiar with, though I would actually say the trend is actually moving away from a desktop and moving to a laptop or a notebook type of system. And as well, you know, these are extremely popular, but you are seeing people carrying around tablets as well. So, you know, these are becoming a lot more popular because they're lightweight and, you know, you can do everything really that you can do with a laptop and a tablet and they're, you know, lighter to carry, easier to carry. So they're becoming more popular. And as well, we also have smartphones or handheld devices. So you're seeing a lot of these as well because, you know, the screens are getting bigger, they're getting more powerful and they are taking, you know, kind of part of the, the tablet market share away because people are using their smartphones for a lot more these days because of the larger screen sizes. So let's actually um, look at types of desktop systems because desktop systems, it's just a generalized term and they do have specifics within them as well. So let's start looking at different types of desktops that we have available to us. So we have our standard desktop computer and this is what we're all very familiar with using. Uh, you know, it has your um, separate devices, so you have a separate mouse, keyboard, monitor, and the system unit as well, which we will talk about um, in a bit. So we also have these all-in-one computers, and these all-in-one computers are actually really nice because it gets rid of the monitor and the system unit and it puts it into one device. So it's a lot cleaner, it takes up less space, and a lot of the companies that offer these all-in-one computers are actually making them look nicer, so you want to, you know, when you put them out, it's not like a 
an ugly eyesore in your room anymore. They're actually making them really clean. If you think about like the Apple iMac, it's an elegant system. And we have other ones such as the Dell Inspiron and the HP Pavilion are other examples of all-in-one computers that you can go and purchase. And next, we actually can look at um, types of laptops because this is another um, type, like, you know, type that we can expand upon as well. And we have our regular laptop that we're used to, um, you know, usually about a 12, 13, 14, 15 inch screen. Um, you know, and then, you know, they usually weigh between three or four pounds. They're pretty heavy. Then we get to our netbooks, our ultra books, and these are actually pretty lightweight and easy to carry around. They are not as powerful as a regular laptop, but you could still do a lot of your daily needs with them. So they are also very useful and, you know, helpful to carry around because they're not as heavy. Um, next, we have tablets, which, you know, these are um, provide you with like a regular laptop. They would look like a regular laptop, but they also have a touch screen so you can do data input through them as well. And next, we have our tune ones. And these are becoming popular because it's kind of like putting together a laptop and a tablet like an, um, an iPad together where you have, you know, this keyboard full featured, everything you need in a regular laptop, but you can disconnect parts of it and just take, you know, the screen with you. So they are becoming more popular and, you know, you're seeing them more widely used. And so next up, we have the system unit. The system unit contains all your important components that you have, your video card, your system memory, your hard drive, you know, your optical drives. It contains all of these pieces of equipment and this makes your system run. And you can see here as well, um, different pictures and that I've, we have available. And your system memory is actually very important because this actually holds your program data, it's volatile storage, and it's your primary storage. Volatile storage means that once the system's turned off, it loses all the memory that it has. And finally, other important components it contains is your secondary storage, such as your hard drives. Um, you know, and you have mechanical and solid state drives that, um, you know, do differ. And solid state is becoming more um, prevalent today. And you also have USB connected storage, such as USB drives, thumb drives, and so forth. And as well, it has your networking and communication so that you can connect to the internet and browse the websites and get data, check email and everything. So these are um, the types of systems that we have available. We've looked at operating systems and application software. So thanks and we'll see you soon.